so we're going now to move on to hear how coaching can change perceptions on many levels. We're um, going to hear um, how Result, a social enterprise, is led by directors who have lived experience of racism, of being disabled, and other experiences of marginalization. They bring this to their work in their Resilience Beyond Crisis program. Hormuz and Jane, the directors of Result, are going to talk with two of the participants of that program to discuss their experiences. And the individuals that they've coached are Farah Al-Haddad, who's from Damascus, Syria, and works for Choose Love now, and Mona Bani, co-director for the May Project Gardens, working with marginalized urban communities, particularly unaccompanied young refugees. So I'm going to hand over to Hormuz, who will start by talking with Mona. Hormuz. Thank you very much, Mary. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. It's really good to be here. Oop. Sorry, I've just muted myself again. Uh, <laughs> really good to be here. And uh, um, as, as you said, Mary, we are going to look at coaching this time. Uh, very quickly, Results CIC uh, is a, a social enterprise which works uh, with uh, marginalized people uh, and the Resilience Beyond, program, uh, Beyond Crisis that you mentioned was a program that we delivered between December and March of this year for migrants and refugee leaders. So uh, Mona, hello, nice to see you here. Um, we met each other uh, on another program actually as it happens, but we carried on with our coaching on this program that I've just mentioned. And actually in total, we have done 10 coaching sessions uh, over a year's period. So what was your perception about coaching before we started? Um, yeah, that's a good question. I, I kind of wasn't sure exactly how it like maybe differed from um, almost maybe I was a bit like, okay, so it's not quite therapy. Um, and it's not quite sort of, I don't know, maybe something like really, really formal, like you might get sort of, I don't know, business consultants in to help you in your organization with some sort of strategy or whatever. I was like, it's kind of somewhere in between. Um, and something that probably for quite a long time, I wouldn't even have considered that I, I don't know, that I might need or like really understand what it might do, do for me like day to day um, in my work. So yeah, I, I had never considered it until someone sent me the link to that previous program that you mentioned. Yeah. yeah. So how did you find it? You know, what were the initial benefits, let's say, uh, of coaching before I ask you about the longer term benefits? I think when we started, it was kind of at the height of it was, I think, the summer of 2020. So it was really was the height of kind of COVID lockdown. And we'd had some of the craziest few months that I think we've ever had in our organization. We'd sort of had to really, really quickly like reinvent. Well, just like do a whole different type of frontline delivery work and deal with kind of like frontline issues in a way that we always we had done. But we, you know, it had completely kind of changed overnight. We were really stretched. We were really understaffed. Um, I genuinely was a bit like, I don't know how I'm going to find the time to justify sitting for like an hour and just kind of like dwelling into my own thoughts when there's so much that we need to do. But I feel like that was exactly, I guess, what the benefit was, was that I was kind of forced in um, to like a bit of stillness and reflection, which actually rather than subtract, you know, t well, it maybe did subtract time from what I was doing, but actually I came out of it much more focused and much more able to prioritize what I actually had to do and what I didn't desperately need to do. And it probably made like my work a lot more effective. Um, like I have to say you sessions. were very, very good at um, focusing at, at, at really what was important and then prioritizing beyond that. Uh, you know, um, you applied yourself to the whole thing extremely well. Um, so you're right. So at that point, that was a, a, a quite a specific advantage that you seem to get out of it and and then we carried on really um 
and as time went by, you know, think, uh, things changed, but also you were applying different aspects to your coaching. How did it progress for you? I mean, it's quite funny for me that you say I was good at focusing because literally the one thing I feel like I'm so bad at, I feel like like more, you know, you when you run a really small organization, um, you I feel like I'm multitasking all the time and that nothing is ever done like with that much like depth and focus. And that was actually one of the things that I was feeling. So it's good to know that that didn't come across. Um, but um, yeah, I feel like, you know, we kind of, use the sessions to actually specifically do that right like what are the really big kind of macro issues that we're dealing with what are the kind of really imminent issues and sort of what definitely like has to be done what doesn't necessarily have to be done and actually what kind of steps can you take to sort of not just constantly be in like firefighting mode and deal with the immediate yeah. issues that you have in your daily like work but actually what can I do now that will progress us towards a bit of a broader goal in the organization I think that that was the thing I knew I needed but when you are literally firefighting all the time you're like great it'd be amazing if our organization had reached this point in six months time but it's quite luxury to even sit down and think about that but I guess by doing that it definitely helped the present and I guess that was sort of what I really needed to realize was like actually like again it helps the present it doesn't subtract from what needs doing in the present perfect now we don't have a lot of time because uh, Jane wants to talk to her coaches as well and 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 uh, what what are you taking forward from this coaching experience that you've had what, what... I mean I think, first of all, even recognizing that what it is that, like, I think for me, there was a big thing about recognizing the difference between, like, management and leadership and kind of maybe thinking, okay, cool, like, I manage people or I manage things or I manage programs and then realizing where that difference is between what's actually considered, like, leadership and where you're maybe setting, like, vision or you're supporting people's well-being or you're kind of doing something that goes a bit beyond, like, operational kind of management. And I think it was, for me, there was something really crucial about recognizing that and recognizing that difference and how you can be really, how you can hone in on that and do that very well for your organization um, to actually call it that. That's really useful actually. And, and the final thing I'll say is that you used to be quite hard on yourself <laughs> and uh, you know, didn't, didn't kind of give yourself enough credit for what you were doing uh, and also didn't think of yourself enough, but it seems like that is, is happening much more now so I'm really pleased to, to say that to you in, in, in public uh, but also uh, I now have to say that we've run out of time and I, I will pass, uh, pass, you, pass things on to my co-director Jane Cordell who will talk to Farah uh, Hakochi on the program. Thank you so much Mona it was really Thank good you. to hear. Thank you very much thanks. Thank you. Thank you all much. And to Mona as well, it's lovely to hear you. Hi Farah, thank you for joining us this afternoon. And it was such a genuine pleasure to work with you on the Resilience Beyond Crisis programme. I think it was your first coaching experience. Hello to you. I was wondering, well, could we jump in and talk about that point about navigating challenges? How did you feel maybe the coaching helped you? Because as Mona said, it was an amazing time. How did it help? Thank you, Jane. So nice to see you again and nice to see multiple familiar faces on, the, on this call. Thank you for coming. Uh, I think for me, um, I, I'm, I was already aware of some of the challenges that come with um, being a professional, uh, young professional, a woman and someone with lived experience of displacement. And I think coaching, your coaching sessions helped me see the power in, in those intersectional identities and reminded me that um, I, I have faced difficult situations in the past and I faced them with resilience. Uh, and, and through our sessions, I was one, reminded of that and two, developed a better understanding of what resilience even means and how I can practice it within my personal and professional life. Uh, and that was the greatest kind of gift in addition to more practical tools which you taught me, um, whether it's to know my limitations or my strengths. 
And I would also like to ask you a question about uh, what inspired you to become a coach. Thank you. I decided to do two, uh, which is great. Um, what inspired me to become a coach was in a way parallel to your own experience, maybe, of feeling excluded, feeling discriminated, being very much someone who stood out in the mainstream job I did then, and benefiting from having coaching on a program for people who are disabled and just loving the feeling of direct support you could provide and feeling maybe as you said for her, that when you have challenges to face yourself you bring more to the party it's certainly true of you you're thinking about how to value the whole of yourself all your experience and all the skills that that gave you and i wanted to ask you maybe we've got time for now there maybe one or two more questions have you noticed any changes in yourself for a since you had coaching, anything tangible that you learned? Yeah, absolutely. And thank you for that answer. Uh, I think that that commonality of feeling excluded um, helped me helped me know that I'm not the only one, that there are many of us out there who don't fit the strict mold, let's say, uh, of you know, who gets to thrive in work environments. And so in learning that, I, I feel like I became more confident in my skills and uh, and more aware of concepts like, um, what was it called? Uh, imposter syndrome, which you taught us. Uh, and I also, oh. one, one thing I value a lot from the coaching is learning how to better navigate professional conversations, which are often, oftentimes difficult, confrontational, sensitive. And now I feel I can apply uh, some of the kind of skills like the assertiveness, how to be assertive in, in speaking up or self-advocating. Um, and the other thing that was very inspiring to me, which I'm still practicing and learning, is um, how to preserve my energy, uh, to create space in my life for creativity, for rest, uh, for motivation, things like that. Uh, so I definitely feel that those have changed my experience professionally and personally. And um, I think we might have time for one question to you, if that's okay. Um, so given your experience... <laughs> Given your experience with coaching and the lessons uh, you've learned and taught, uh, what recommendations would you give employers and employees? Wow, that's a lovely question, thank you. Blimey, if I could have the power that the young people were talking about earlier. But advice to employers and employees, I think, is actually about um, realising people's whole potential. It would be that coaching, if it's targeted, can really unblock people. I think sometimes people feel they have to shrink themselves to the prevailing cultural framework, make themselves smaller and fit in. And we don't want that. We need everybody to say those, all the different bits of them, as you've said, all their creativity and resilience and assertiveness and ability to self-advocate. So I would recommend giving it a go. I think coaching primarily helps to encourage self-awareness too. And you all know from your workplaces that when you work in atmospheres of self-aware, things are so much easier. Openness, confidence, self-awareness. So I would say definitely give it a go. And I'm not pitching, we've got plenty of work. <laughs> But for her, can I just say, we're wrapping up now. Thank you, and thank you to her more than many, everybody on the call. It's been a huge pleasure. Back to Mary, I think, yes. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. That's just been such a fascinating session and so many insights, the importance of feeling that you're not alone, that there are others who, with different experience, have also felt excluded and the importance, I like the idea of expansion and expanding oneself. And also the way that um, it's, it's such a burden to have to learn all the new languages that one has to learn um, coming to um, a new country, not just um, the language that people normally speak, but all the language of cultural exchange, of professional life. Um, so, I just learned so much this afternoon from all of the people who've spoken so far. And um, I hope you all have as well.